I see the triangle, right? I, fi I figured it out. For <laughs> some reason, the, the solid uh, hold it down, it's the beige rage, and the agitator. And the, and the agitator. The Breakfast Club. Everyone just kept telling me to prep for this. One word to describe The Breakfast Club would be black. Impact in the culture. People watch The Breakfast Club for, like, news and really be tuned in, man. I don't even know what it calls Breakfast Club. It's like brunch. Envy, Yee, and Charlemagne. Wake that ass up, get out of bed, and listen to The Breakfast Club. I'm waking up. Good morning, USA. Hey, fam. Guess what day it is? Guess what day it is? Hump day. All right. Yes, it's Wednesday hump day. You see this uh, this big box I have here? Oh, you need to do some Kegels. <laughs> no, not, shut up. <laughs> uh, I don't remember. Uh, there was a, a, a woman that came up here and they were, she was talking about, I don't even remember the site, so I feel so bad, where you can actually <laughs> um, raise money for black businesses, black businesses that are starting. So, um... Uh, Rhyme Antics was on there. Uh, a, a brother that created his own cereal. So it's a, a, a it's a series for uh, a black people. There's black people on the cover. It's, it's for people. black people, or it's a cereal anyone can eat. It's a cereal that anybody can yeah, eat. But a brother created. actually designed it, created it, mm -hmm. and it's good to see people that look like us on the cover. So proud puffs. Yeah, proud puffs. So I actually bought it, and he delivered it. But when he delivered it, he said, "Give one to Angela Yee and Charlamagne." But y'all ain't pay for it, so I think I should keep it, right? Yeah, it's very generous of you. Goodness I was actually going to give you a fresh, a fresh juice this morning. All right, well, I'll give you that. That's for you. And this one's for Charlotte. My Daily Green Glow. Yeah, Proud Puffs. So definitely check it out. Google Proud Puffs. I think it was pretty dope. So all right, all I just right. want to support black businesses. I like to see people win and people make it. You opened that one already. No, that one was open already. I'm going to give that one to Charlemagne. <laughs> all right. Well, good. <laughs> well, that's nice. Yeah. It's a beautiful thing. Absolutely. So shout out to the brother for delivering Man, it. Man, how morning. is the weather out there this morning? Uh, weather wasn't too bad. Uh, they're saying a lot of wind today. They said the Northeast is still hitting New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, Boston. So they're saying a lot of weather today. So they're saying do not, if you're in those areas, do not take the cheap umbrella, the $5 umbrella. Get a sturdy umbrella because it's going to blow away. When the wind blows and your umbrella goes inside out. Absolutely. It's the worst. And then you're like, man, I'm just going to throw this away. Yeah. So that's that's uh, my morning today. All right. Let me get myself together. Get this. Uh, well, Snoop Dogg is going to be joining us this yes, morning. Yes, Uncle Snoop will be in the building. Drop a bomb for Snoop. He got a new album, Algorithm, that comes out next week, so we'll talk to Snoop. He's an international superstar. Yes, he and is. And no matter where you go, everybody knows Snoop Dogg, no matter how old they are, how young they are. Yeah, he's in the studio, he's acting, he's on BMF, he's... DJing. Uh, he's DJing. Snoop is doing so much, man. You gotta love Snoop, man. And mm -hmm. he just turned 50 years old last week, so... Can you Happy believe birthday it? and congratulations to everything that Snoop's doing. All right. All right, let's get the show cracking. Front page news, what are we talking about? Well, let's talk about vaccines. Now the FDA vaccine advisors have voted, and they're going to tell you for the vaccine for kids 5 to 11, age 5 to 11, which one do they recommend? All right, and shout out to Detroit. You know, I'm doing my car show there this weekend, and Detroit's been showing out, man. I really appreciate you guys, man. We're going to have a great time this Saturday. If you haven't got your tickets, get your tickets. Celebrity cars, exotic cars, carnival games. There's so much. And I just want to say salute to everybody in Detroit. Salute to all the artists from Detroit. Everybody's been showing love, and I really, really appreciate it. We're doing it for just family fun, so I can't wait to see you guys. Well, if you're in the Detroit area, also stop by my store, Private Label Extensions. I might stop by. I need, on I need 8 Mile leave. and DeQuinder. We, can get you. we got you. We actually got some lace from Beards for it just for you. All right. All right. All right. Well, you're going to see me at the car show with a lace front bed then. <laughs> All right. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Let's get in some front page news. Now, World Series game one, the Braves beat the Astros 6-2. to two. Kiki Palmer, she trended after singing the national anthem and killing it. So shout out to Kiki Palmer. Now, what else we got, Yeezy? Do we have any of it? Yeah. Do we have some? Yeah. Let's play it. the land. Do okay, not big forget Kiki. that Kiki Palmer is a singer. Okay, okay Big Kiki. Drop on a clues bomb for Kiki Palmer. She sang that. Now what else you got, Easy? I ain't hear it, but I believe it. Vaccine advisors have now voted 17 and 0 uh, to recommend emergency use authorization of Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine for kids ages 5 to 11. So they agreed the benefits of vaccinating younger children appear to outweigh the risk. And you know, with that vaccine, it's about one-third of... The doses that they give to adults. So 
It's not the same dosage, but they are saying that uh, for children aged under uh, 12, they show this lower dose does protect kids well against symptomatic infec- infection. The hope is that it will cause fewer side effects. So we shall see. Oh, and they're also not, saying. That's not a good line to say the hope is. Not when you're dealing with your little Sharon. You know what I mean? Well, they just want to make sure. When they say the hope is, they're saying that they have. And, and here's the thing. It is tough because they've only tested it in a few thousand children. We don't know that that's enough. But it is emergency use right now. But they're saying against symptomatic infection. So in other words, you can still get COVID but not have those symptoms and not get extremely sick or thought, worst thought, case scenario I thought die. they wanted us adults to get uh, vaccinated so we don't infect the kids. It wasn't wasn't that the whole thing? Yeah, but everybody's not vaccinated. And then, you know, when you go to school, a bu- I'm around a bunch of kids that are not vaccinated because mm-hmm. they weren't able to get vaccinated. If one of them has it, everybody can get it. Yeah, but if you only tested on a few thousand kids, I'm not about to make one of my children a guinea pig. All right. Now, what they are saying, if uh, people who have a compromised immune system, you may need a fourth COVID-19 shot. Oh, Lord. Yes. So I, thought, that's, I thought for people with compromised immune system, you only needed a third. Now you need a fourth. Well, yeah, they're saying this that crazy. people with certain health conditions that may make them moderately or severely immunocompromised may get that fourth shot, according to updated guidelines. Now, they did authorize that third dosage. And they said a third dose rather than a booster, by the way. So that's the distinction, right? Not just a, a booster, but a third dose. I'm so confused. Because they're saying you may not have a, a so complete... Are they. <laughs> yeah, I know. Just say you ain't get the recipe right, man. So Just say they. you didn't get the recipe right and you're still doing taste tests. Well, they're saying at least six months after you get the third one, then you can get a fourth one. So does that mean they're going to have the kids take a second, third, and fourth one too? Uh, I don't think so. They so what was the booster? That. They just finally uh, approved it for kids for the first one. So. so listen, what was the booster? Guys, things are changing every day. I'm trying to keep up. We just don't know. That just sounds crazy. So a booster's not a shot? A booster is a shot. But did she, but you just you read need, that a booster's not a shot? Then you might need four. But if the booster's the same shot as the regular shot. Well, let's be say. clear. The dose is two shots, right, for Pfizer and for Moderna. For mm-hmm. Johnson & Johnson, it's one shot. A booster Correct. is just one shot. Right. So but, for a full dosage, that's two shots for Moderna and for Pfizer. But you just said that they just, I don't know. You just said it was a distinction between a booster and a shot? Now, all the shots are the same, right? They all the same, right? I mean, that's what I'm trying to figure out. What's the difference between a booster and a shot? No, I think they're all the same. We need a doctor in here, okay? Shot. I don't want <laughs> to speculate on I, anything. I I'm just telling you on. what CNN is reporting. It's starting to feel like Squid Games. Don't and, move. <laughs> if you move, you're going to get shot. And Moderna is going to supply Africa with up to 110 million COVID doses. So they'll be available to African countries. They said that is a breakthrough on the world. That's the least vaccinated continent. So they have been really trying to get some of these uh, vaccinations and have not been able to. And they feel like the rich countries have been hoarding these vaccinations. So now the U.S. is going to make sure that they direct 110 million doses to Africa. I want to take everything from Africa, but don't ever want to give Africa nothing. Drop on the clues bombs for Africa, man. Damn it. All right. Well, that is your front page news. Now, get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, hit us up right now. Phone lines are wide open. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. This is your time to get it off your chest. Whether you're man or black. Say it with your chest. We want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. So if you got something on your mind, let it out. Hello, who's this? This is Jasmine. Hey, Jasmine, get it off your chest. Well, actually, I'm not even trying to get it off my chest. I'm trying to answer your question about the uh, vaccine and the booster versus the third dose. What are your credentials, Jasmine? Are you a nurse, doctor? <laughs> I'm a nurse. I'm okay. a RN. Okay. I actually do COVID clinics every week, so. Let's talk about it. All right, so the booster... It's just like any other vaccine where after a few years, your body's immune system kind of weakens. So they have to give you a booster. A third dose is for immunocompromised. So because they don't have the the immune system as good, they have to give a third dose. So that's what's the difference between a booster and a third dose. But are they the same shot? Are they the same things in the it, shot to all the, the same? same? Yeah, it's the so, same dosage and so, everything. So they put the same thing in you four times? <laughs> uh, if necessary. I don't know about the fourth one. I haven't heard that yet. I know right now we're giving third doses only. Right. But we but haven't started giving boosters yet. To your point, though, um, doesn't it seem like it's a little too soon? Like, you know, you said you said every year, or every couple years it wears off. Like, at least every year. I know with flu vaccines, you get it every year. Right, but that's not a booster either. The flu shot. So the flu, the flu, um, vac- the virus, I'm sorry. 
actually changes every year. So that's why they give you a new vaccine okay. every year. Just like just COVID, just like COVID is mutating now, right? Is that? Uh, yeah, but honestly, I don't. That uh, COVID is so new. I honestly think people are just kind of guessing and hoping for the best. That's what it feels like. <laughs> no, cause I did. Like, now you're saying there's a fourth dose. That's wild. Yeah, I went to sleep not knowing about a fourth dose. Now I'm hearing about this, so I'm sure we'll talk about it at work. We have uh, meetings every Wednesday, so. Would you give your kids the um the vaccine? No, hell no. Right, By the way, I, I know a lot of people, a lot of nurses and doctors say that. So. Yeah, I, I didn't want to take it. I took it because of my job, and I took it on the last day possible because I, you know, I had my reservations about it, but I did end up taking it. And I won't tell anyone not to take it because we don't have enough information to tell someone that needs it not to take it. That's right. So, and if you got it, you shouldn't brag about having it because you don't have enough information to know what it might do to you exactly. in a couple of years. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So everybody needs to be humble. Be shaming anyone for not getting it. That's right. And I'm not going to sit here and tell people not to get it. I feel like you just got to do what's best for you. That's right. You don't know for sure. You're absolutely, You're absolutely right. Thank you. Hello, who's this? Hello. Hey, good morning. Get it off your chest. Good morning, you guys. I can't believe I got through. Hey. Well, you're through. What's happening? I've been wanting to get this off my chest since September 20th. And uh, my daughter flew to Dallas to go to the Young Blue concert. And then she gets to the concert just to find out it had been postponed. Ooh. Then he didn't put it on social media, nothing. He was performing at the Bay Area concert. And then on top of that, she made a video, put it on her social media. Someone tagged him in the comments. He sent her a direct message and then said, you know, no bad intentions, nothing like that. It was all, you know, a misunderstanding. And she was like, oh, okay. And he was like, don't worry, we'll give you your money back. So she um, said, oh, wow, really? She was like, well, do you want me to send my cash out? And he said, yes. (laughs) <laughs> she sent it, and that was September 20th, and she still hadn't heard back from him. And it was the blue check mark. Okay, so he said he would, but by the way, I'm sure he doesn't personally have the money if he didn't do the show. Right, I'm sure it's promoters. But the show could have been canceled for any reason. It could have been a COVID scare. It could have been a COVID concern. It could have been anything. It happens all the time. And when you purchase tickets, it usually says that, that the show can be, uh, you know, changed. But the worst well, I get that, but he... He did take her cash app, and she was, is still waiting. No, it's not in her cash app. The problem was he did cancel it, but he, that same night, was performing in the Bay Area. So that wasn't COVID-related. So maybe somebody double-booked him on or, his team. Or maybe somebody you know in the arena got COVID. It, it didn't have to be him. It could have been somebody yeah. in the arena. Like, if somebody in the arena gets COVID, they usually set it to shut it down because they don't know who else got it. It, it, could, be any, it could be any reason. We don't mm-hmm. know. But if he had another performance already booked for that night. It could have been an after party, though. It could have been that they didn't have the money. It could have been anything. So we don't know. But right. we do know that artists, it's not like he booked it himself. You know. He did finally post that night, like at nine o'clock after the show would have started, and said this was just too good of an opportunity for him to pass up. Oop. Why? Um, <laughs> why? Why is she? Uh, first of all, this call is. I'm yeah. sorry, man, but it's boring me to death. But why? Why is that? Why is he seeking a refund? Why is she seeking a refund directly from him, though, well, and not the venue? Direct, she didn't seek it directly from him. She just posted a video and somebody tagged him and then he hit her of flying out getting to there just to find out it was canceled so someone tagged him 10 minutes later he dm'd her yeah i would i would advise her to get a refund from the venue yeah and not wait on the artist that's just common sense but what do i know get it off your chest 800-585-1051 if you need to vent hit us up now it's the breakfast club good morning the breakfast club the power 105.1. Wake up, wake up. Wake your ass. This is your time to get it off your chest. Whether you're mad or blessed, we want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. Hello, who's this? Good morning, how are you? How are you? I'm all right, I'm a little upset. Mm, why why are you sorry? upset? I'm upset about $4 gas prices. Oh, yeah, me I'm too. I'm upset about Mayor de Blasio 
putting mandates for everybody. It doesn't make any sense. Now they want us to have three, four shots, five shots. When does it end? <laughs> One fish, two fish, three fish, four. <laughs> It's just out of control. I don't understand it. I don't, they don't get want to it either. Up Florida's numbers. Look at Florida's numbers right now. They're a lot lower than the rest of the country, but they don't want to talk about it. So, are the, uh, are the mandates working or not? They're not working. I was looking at Japan too. Japan had a, a, a plummet in COVID for some reason, and they don't even know why. It's just like Japan numbers just, it's just it's dropped. Just, it's just out of control. They, they want the government wants more control over us, and it, it's just it's just not right. I don't know what's what anymore, bro. And I'm not going to sit here and act like I do. And this is the best. This is the best. Kyrie Irving can't play in New York because of the mandate. But an away player that that isn't vaccinated can play. How does that make any sense? It doesn't. doesn't. Wait, away players you know can play that's not vaccinated time. in New York? Yes. Yeah, as long as they're not uh <laughs> as long as they're not from New York. As long as they're not from New York. But that that's been a rule in New York for a while. Even if you like live in Jersey, you can like still like at least in my experience it said if you was from out of state, you could go to the uh, you could go to the garden. But if you live in New York, you had to be vaccinated to be in the garden. It just doesn't make any sense. The, the, the Democrats tell us follow the science, follow the science. We're following the science. Eh? It doesn't make sense. They weren't following the silent science this time last year either. Though. They sounded just like how we I sound know, right now. I know, and they're changing the guidelines every other day. I, I I don't understand it anymore. I don't either, brother. Hello, who's this? Hey, how y'all doing? Hey, good morning, man. Today? Get it off your chest, bro. Hey, man, I was just calling just to uh, uh, wish me and my wife and our happy anniversary. Been married for about three years now. So Congratulations, King. I, I appreciate that, boss. I just want to let everybody know, whew, it's, it ain't easy, <laughs> but uh, it was one of the best decisions I've ever made. Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you, brother. Congratulations. What you doing for your anniversary? Uh, probably um this weekend. I'm um I had uh got us a little table at No Del Frisco's. Hey. And, okay. And, you know, I tell you right now, best bread in the world, man. Best bread. <laughs> All right, bro. Um, but um a nice little hotel. You know, do our little thing. There you uh, go. In uh, Dallas, Texas. All right. Well, enjoy. You, it, you man. gonna give it that little thing? You said doing that little thing. You gonna give it that little thing too? He said, "I'm doing my little thing." Uh, yeah, yeah just a little thing, thing, thing. That's oh, good. At least you listen, man. It's good to be aware of your size, man. Oh, my goodness. All right, brother. Have a good one. <laughs> Get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. Now, we got rumors on the way? Yes, and let's address this insecure backlash over the portrayal of Tiffany as an AKA. Now the organization is speaking out. Oh, boy. All right, we'll get into that next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Listen up. It's just the all the guys. Gossip. The Rumor Report. Gossip. With Angela. Angela Yee. It's The Rumor Report. The Breakfast Club. Well, yesterday we were talking about the backlash that Insecure got and Amanda Seals got for portraying Tiffany as an AKA on the show, complete with an outfit with the shield on, with the AKA's official shield. So, apparently you do have to get clearance. And now, according to... Um, According to reports, they did not get clearance, so not sure what exactly is going on. Now, originally, here's what Amanda Seals had to say about her portrayal of Tiffany as an AKA. I don't know why people keep asking me if I'm a soror. I am not a soror. Tiffany is a soror. Tiffany is a character on a TV show. I didn't write the character. I play the character. I'm an actress. Now, according to Cynthia D. Howell, who is the executive director of the AKAs, she sent out a letter. We were made aware of the unauthorized use of our brand on the HBO show Insecure early yesterday morning and are taking steps to protect our brand. Please allow the corporate office to handle this matter. We all have a duty to protect our brand. You can do your part by refraining from engaging with anyone involved with the show or with anyone, including other sorors on social media about this matter. Thank you for your continued assistance and cooperation. So we'll see how this plays out, but I can't imagine that they're not going to somehow work this out. Mm -hmm. I still can't imagine that they wouldn't get clearance. Well, maybe they didn't request it. Maybe the ball was dropped somewhere along the line. Maybe they got it from the wrong person. I was also told that email wasn't supposed to be out. Yeah, it was sent (laughs) to the other members of the organization. Mm -hmm. So it makes me wonder if it's even real, but we'll see. Taraji P. Henson and Angela Simmons are opening up about domestic violence and their own personal experiences. October is recognized as Domestic Violence Awareness Month. This is the 34th year 
that they've done this. It's been around since 1987. Domestic violence does affect about 10 million people every year. And most commonly, black women are the victims. Okay, they said that more than two out of every five black women will experience domestic violence. So on Taraji's latest episode of Peace of Mind with Taraji, she was on with Angela Simmons and they opened up about their experiences. Here's what Angela Simmons had to say. Great relationship at first, obviously. I dealt with somebody with a temper and I didn't know, you know what I mean? It started off as small things and then next thing you know, stuff's getting thrown at me or I'm against a wall Uh, or I'm jumping out of moving cars because I'm afraid mm. or I'm calling cops. Like, I never thought in a million years I was going to be that person, Mm -hmm. you know? And so when I was going through, I'm like, this is insane. And like, at the same time, you're not wanting to tell like, no one around you because you're in a relationship with the person, right? And you don't really want them to judge them. And in a weird way, you're still guarding them. And here is what Taraji had to say about her own experience. For me, it was when blood was drawn. Really? Yeah, because it was started with the bruises and, you know, grabbing and things like that. And then once the fist came, once the ball hand came and the fist, and I'm just missing a piece of my lip to this day. Oh, my gosh. Mm. Um, that's when I knew I had to go. Wow. Because I grew up around it. And at the time, I had my son, and I was like, I don't want my son around this. Yikes. Mm-mm. Well, as as we've just said, October is the month to acknowledge that. So a lot of women have been through it. And I'm sure we all know somebody who's gone through it if we haven't personally experienced it. All right. Now, Megan the Stallion is set to graduate from college this year. So congratulations to her. She posted 2021 finna graduate college, taking my graduation pics today. I can't wait for y'all to see this. So shout out to Meg the Stallion for to her. making that a priority for herself. What was her major? Do you know? Um, still, uh, it was health administration. Health That's administration. what she was taking courses for. Okay. All right, now Coyle Ray. Apparently, her impressor, her boyfriend, have broken up. So the two of them were together on social media a lot. They had uh, the song together, attachments, and she just posted single. And then she said, if your N-word lets you go to sleep mad every night, you need a new N-word. And then she said, I don't owe nobody ish. Been fighting my demons. Been drinking a little way more than usual. Take the drugs. Don't let the drugs take you. And here is what Presser had to say. He was just on The Breakfast Club. Are y'all still together? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right, my just baby. Just had to make sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my baby. How did, how did you meet Coyle Ray? Uh, attachments brought us together. Mm-hmm, that song. Yeah, I want to the song. You feel me? So everything was all good just a few days ago and then I guess you know they got broken up but she is single now all right I'm Angela Yee and that is your rumor report all right thank you Miss Yee now we got front page news next what are we talking about yes let's talk about the CEO of Spanx Sarah Blakely and I love her story but uh, she surprised her employees. They gave, She gave them an, a very nice gift. All right. We'll get into that next. And also next hour, Snoop Dogg will be joining us. We'll kick it with Uncle The icon Snoop. living. We're going to love on Snoop this morning, man. So we're going to uh, get to that next. All right. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Your mornings will never be the same. Now, everybody's talking about TikTok right now, even sports fans. Now, Charlamagne, you seen this? Why are you talking to me about football and trying to show me TikToks, man? Because your team is on there. Their fans are on there. The players are on there. This is where the real talk is happening. There's like literally everything you could think of right now on TikTok. You just got to see it. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Let's get in some front page news. World Series Game 1. The Braves beat the Astros in Game 1, 6-2. to two. All right, what else we got, Yeezy? Well, the CEO of Spanx, Sarah Blakely, she's a CEO and founder, surprised her employees in celebration of the company being acquired by Blackstone, which is a global investment firm. So here she is giving everybody their gift. To celebrate this moment, I have bought each one of you two first class tickets to anywhere in the world. Love it. You know, if you go on a trip, you might want to go out to a really nice dinner, or you might want to go out to a really nice hotel. And so, with everybody's two first class tickets to anywhere in the world, you are each getting $10,000. I love it. I love that. That is That's beautiful. Dope. 750 employees. And the company is now valued at $1.2 billion. Dropping the clues, boss. Her. What's her name? Sarah Blakely. Sarah Blakely. I love, love it. it. And she has an amazing story. What book did I read? I was reading about her in... Um, and her whole entire story in one of these, I can't remember what book it was, but it was a series of different stories about people who are 
Oh, you know what? It was James Altucher's book. Employees, do your homework. Figure out where you want to go. Make sure you do the proper due diligence because you want to go somewhere. Make that, that first class ticket right. count, baby. <laughs> make, make it count. <laughs> make it count. Uh, and, um, yeah, so really dope. Have y'all ever used Spanx? No. Mm, never had to. Okay. All right, now the NFL. Let's talk about what Roger Goodell has to say, the commissioner, as far as Deshaun Watson. Now, the playing status of Houston Texans quarterback Deshaun Watson uh, does not sound like it's going to be altered anytime soon. Roger Goodell said at the league owners meeting that the NFL doesn't have enough information. He has 22 civil lawsuits that have been filed alleging sexual assault and inappropriate behavior. Here is what Roger Goodell had to say. There obviously are other legal approaches that are being made either through civil cases. Obviously, the police have been investigating also. Uh, we don't have all the access to that information at this point in time, and we pride ourselves on not interfering in that. And until that process is ongoing and we have enough data and enough information to be able to make a determination of whether he should go on commissioner exempt, we don't feel that we have that necessary information at this point. I thought I saw yesterday that uh, people were trying to trade for him. Well, he has a no trade clause in his contract, so he does want to be traded. He does not plan to play for the Texans. He's been showing up every day, uh, but the team has been leaving him on the inactive list for each of its seven regular season games so far. I saw the Panthers and somebody else was the Dolphins. Yeah, Panthers and Dolphins. But, you know, people are hesitant right now because there's a lot of uncertainty around his legal situation. The NFL has changed a lot, boy, because they used to let people play for things just as bad, if not worse. I guess they're waiting to see legally how this plays out because right now it's 22 civil lawsuits. All right. Now, according to a new finding by the Federal Trade Commission, they're saying that the annual cigarette sales rose in the United States for the first time in 20 years. Wow. They said more Americans bought cigarettes last year, but spending on cigarette advertising and promotion also increased. And this is the first time spending has risen in 20 years as well. And they're saying a lot of people are stressed because of the pandemic, and that might be one of the possible causes causes mm, of I'm why sure people. I'm sure that's it. Mm -hmm. Cigarette smoking kills more than 480,000 th 480, Americans a year. Cigarette smoking. Where's the mandate on cigarettes yeah, to make people a, stop smoking? Yeah, how can cigarettes? they have a ban cigarettes? Like, the, there's nothing good in cigarettes, right? There's nothing no benefits from cigarettes. So what the heck if they didn't ban the cigarettes? Shouldn't there be a mandate on cigarettes? To start, but cigarettes make too much money. They yeah. And then, you That's know, really they also down. noted smokeless and electronic tobacco with flavors made up more than half of that revenue. I think people think that smokeless or the flavors are not as bad for you, and that's simply not true. It's all bad. All I know is 480,000 people die smoking cigarettes every year. That is a pandemic within itself. Okay. Uh, highly addictive. All right, well, that is your front page news. All right, thank you, Miss Yee. Now, when we come back, Snoop, Uncle Snoop will the be joining icon us. icon living. That's right. Okay? So we're going to kick it with Snoop when we come back. We're going to love on Snoop. That's what we're going to do. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. A mother legend in here smelling like fresh weed and fresh leather. There you go. Snoop Dogs. What up, though? What up, though? What's happening? Yeah, we show, we, uh, we, we've been giving uh, the people that we feel deserve the flowers their flowers. So we're giving you your flowers today. That's there, why you there, see there, the there's not Snoop. enough flowers for you, nah, though. definitely not. <laughs> there's really some, not. We got some liquor for Snoop today. Get on his side, not on my side. Yeah, because you know, he already drunk. He's been drinking all night. <laughs> <laughs> Some ace of spades for you. Oh, wow. <laughs> gave me an old saying. bottle, too. Y'all gave me an old bottle. Got fingerprints and shit all on it. <laughs> it's got to be a regift. I already know what it yeah. is. <laughs> we got food over there for you. <laughs> we got weed that. for you. Yeah, all types of Thank you. Man. Thank I don't you. think Snoop wants our weed. No, I really don't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what you smoking nowadays, Snoop? Bubble gum. I got some bubble gum cushion from the Bay Area. Is it indigo or sativa? It's indigo. Oh, nice. He's oh, I, I love oh, my indigo. man. <laughs> okay. So, so <laughs> Snoop, with all the stuff that you do, all the businesses, all the acting, everything, the music, the tours, what made you say, you know what, you want to uh, help Def Jam out? Well, first of all, I'm a fan of Def Jam Records, and I just feel like I still have a lot in me. I feel like I have a lot of information, wisdom, guidance, and tutelage for a lot of these artists. It's not so much about me, because I'm not signed to Def Jam as an artist. I'm only creative consultant executive. So it's not about me as an artist, it's more about me helping to develop artists and put the spirit back in Def Jam the way it's supposed to be. Now there was a period uh, when the West Coast saved Def Jam before. Yeah, Warren G. Yep. And, and my pen has something to do with that as well. Mm -hmm. Oh, you wrote uh, on regular? Like I said, my pen has something to do with that. <laughs> That's a hip-hop tidbit we never knew. 
I mean, because we was trying to protect the homie from Suge Knight at the time. Suge was taking everything, so we wanted to make sure Warren G had a dope record without him being able to get it. So we silently, me and Corrupt and a few others, went to work for Warren G to make sure that his record would be what it was. Wow. So, so y'all didn't mind him signing to Def Jam? Y'all didn't want we him? We wanted him to sign with Def Jam. We all wanted to be on Def Jam. Def Jam was a dream label. Mm -hmm. You got to understand, Public Enemy, Slick Rick, LL Cool J, EPMD. You understand what I'm saying? Like, this is foundation to hip hop mm -hmm. for us. And, and Def Jam was just the ultimate label. They had the best street teams. They mm -hmm. had units of people that would come there. They had Rockefeller, Murder Inc., <laughs> Rough Riders. They just, everything was attractive to Def Jam, and I want that spirit back. How do you get that back with so many artists wanting to go independent and go the independent route and saying they don't need the labels? How do you get that? How do you restore the feeling? Well, independence is good. I, I respect that. But there's something called global, and independence don't give you that global approach that you know, some of these majors can give you. You saw Meek Mill was saying he's never seen a check from his record label ever. Is that a common thing for artists to sign to a label and get your advance but then not see any money later? Well, it's about that word recoup. See, a lot of people don't mention that word. When mm -hmm. they put money up front, that means they want money back. And if you haven't made the money based off of your record sales or whatever your deal consists of, then you unrecouped. And that times leads you not to get any more money. That's why they like giving you money up front so you can owe them. But in the independence world, there's really no money up front. It's you taking the risk and you receiving everything. So what about you with your first album? Because your first album was one of the biggest albums ever in the history of life. I was fighting a murder case, so I couldn't really financially, you know, gain like I needed to because my finances were spent on the case to make sure that I was going to have my freedom. Do you remember how much I had to spend on that case? Millions, like in the, in the, in the tens. Of well, first, you know what? We didn't say happy birthday to Snoop. Snoop just turned I 50 know, last week. Happy birthday, happy birthday, Snoop. You, man. How does 50 feel, yeah, man? When I see you feel. 50, I'm like, you know what? <clears throat> I'm, I, I can do it. Uh, like I was telling one of my homies when I was young, 50 was old. You know, when you <laughs> see somebody right. 50, they be walking with their back lent over. That's and right. They, mm -hmm. Now we, we, we look at it like 50 is cool. I got six grandkids. I got a beautiful wife, some kids at home that love me, and I'm still doing what I do. I don't feel like I'm getting old. I feel like I'm getting better. I feel like the information and the knowledge that I have now could be used to, to spread around to the people who call me Uncle Snoop. So now I can give them real information and treat my nephews and nieces the right way by giving them game that they need. And edges laid like a mother the hair healthy. <laughs> come on, Charlamagne, you know I come from that side of the family where you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, because there's a lot of brothers I ain't gonna say no name. I'm looking at they one. They dredges hanging oh. on <laughs> for dead life. I'm looking at one right now that ain't got no hair in no, the corner. Zero. Forget me. I'm talking about the dredge just be holding on Man. like, let me go. Let me go. Not another day. <laughs> <laughs> what, what did the pandemic teach you? Actually, it's what I love because I love being to myself. I love being self-centered and being a, able to breathe and to think and to be creative. It taught me that um, people need to understand what life is about and really, you know, treasure it and, and spend time with their loved ones because you never know when they're going to leave. Just lost my mom a couple of days ago. and uh, Sorry to hear that. Thank you. It's like it's heavy on my heart, but at the same time, I know that these are things that she loved for me to do to make people smile, to make people laugh, to spread joy. So the pandemic taught me to love people more, to, to be more up close and personal, and to be more understanding, because there's a lot of mental health going on. And we all have it, but we mm -hmm. just ashamed to say it. So I'm just wanting to be upfront about it, to say, yeah, we all deal with mental health issues. And the pandemic showed me how to be a better person when dealing with other people and myself. Is that why the, the song, I love anxiety with, uh, how you pronounce the name, Malaya? Malaya, yeah. Malaya, man, that anxiety record's so, so hard. Like, why? Because we go through that, right? Yeah. It feels like we all go through that, but it's starting to become cool to talk about. Mm -hmm. You know, if you said it maybe five years ago, people look at you like you're crazy. Mm -hmm. No, I just want some help. Mm -hmm. I just want to know what's going on in my head. Maybe I'm traumatized from my family from the 50s or the 40s, from the slavery and the segregation, and it's spilling off into my... DNA. You never know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've been going. I've been going to therapy once a week for like five years now. Do it work? Yeah, I mean, but you know, it's not just therapy. Therapy gives you the the, the language and, and the understanding of what it is you're going through. But then right. you got to actually start doing real processes to, to heal for real, for real. And it's a, it seems like when you get in therapy, the most drama comes your way because it's going to test you to see if the therapy is actually working. Absolutely. You do you go? Or? Me and my wife went to therapy about like maybe twelve years ago because. We was having some rough times, and um, I spoke to a couple of friends of mine, and they was like, man, it, it ain't going to get no better if you and her just keep arguing and trying to figure it out. You need to put somebody in the middle mm -hmm. who's going to play 
no sides. Mm -hmm. And when we went to go see the therapist, it was the best thing that could happen to us because we had somebody that wasn't on my side or her side. They was just on the truth. And it helped us become a better, you know, a better family to understand how to deal with each other. And, and condolences, too, on your queen, man. Yeah, absolutely. Like, thank you. I heard that, uh, what's the song? Um, the song with D Smoke and, and Wiz Khalifa. Um, uh, mm -hmm. Steady trying to deal with this pain. Man, I, when I heard that, I'm like, and that's the that last had song to hit album. different now. It do, and you know what's crazy? The artist Camino from Mississippi, shout out to Camino. He was calling me like, uh, don't put this album out without me being on it. Let me get on it, please. And he sent me that song, and I heard it, and I was like, this is dope. But I wasn't listening to it for that reason. I was right. just like, it's That's dope. Right. And I, he was like, I want Wiz on it. I put Wiz in D Smoke. Mm -hmm. Then I'm dealing with life, and then my mother passed. And I'm like, why is this the last song on mm -hmm. the album? This is God. This is the Absolutely. angel. This is what she wanted me to see, that you're going to deal with this pain, but you got to push forward. All right, we got more with Snoop. When we come back, don't move. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We're still kicking it with Snoop. Now, let's talk about this album. What was your mind frame on this album? Because there's some songs you rapping on it, some songs you just letting people go, some songs you talking. So what was the mind frame of doing this album? Algorithm. Mm -hmm. The algorithm is f***ed up right now. It's mm -hmm. based off of computers and some machine telling you what's hot, what's not, and what to play. When it used to be, DJs would fill records on the streets, come bring them up in here, break that shit, and let it be what it be. So that's what I'm doing with this algorithm project. I'm just making great music with artists, myself, established artists, new artists, producers that I love, and just trying to put feeling back in music, because music just sound good. It don't feel good no more. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Now, I'm slaps. I, I, told, I came here this morning and said that, but it don't, it's not a Snoop album. No, it's not. Yeah, it's, it's a like compilation. A That's what it is. Oh, okay. Like. It's just using me as the front guy to get the attention and the awareness on Dev Jam and what I plan on doing at Dev Jam. Mm -hmm. You put my name out there and say, this is a Snoop Dogg project, and you start listening, you're like, damn, it's, it's got a Mary J. Blige song, right. a Usher song, right. a new artist here. And, man, come on, Red I Mel. Babies, come on, I came out here first. That's what people don't know. Mm -hmm. When I first got the Dev Jam situation, I wasn't even signed yet. I flew out here and rented the studio, and who kid? helped me get it together, and I went and got Benny the Butcher and a bunch of rappers that I knew that was hot. That record's so hot. Mm -hmm. And pulled them all in and was like, I'm gonna save New York first. And what I mean by that is, it ain't hip hop like it used to be out here. And I'm a from the West Coast saying that. And I want hip hop back in New York. I want the feeling back. So what I did was grab some artists that I knew who represent hip hop. Jadakiss, Red Man, Method Man, Benny the Butcher, Buster Rhymes, Fab, Dave East, to put them on the project to let New York know that I feel the same way y'all feel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Buster busted everybody ass. No, I, no, that's hard to say. I can say that. Benny got busy too and kissed, but Buster was really Boy, in his Buster. bag in that on that Boy. one. Yeah, <laughs> but he was last. You yeah. know when you're the last thing you right. get to hear that's everybody right. else. Yeah, that's yeah. right. And he requested that record. I had played a snippet on Instagram. And Buster Rhymes called me. Yo, General. Yo, <laughs> send me that. Shit. <laughs> what is that? So I had to send him the track. Who would you want to see, since we're talking about Buster, who would you want to see Buster go against on the verses? Buster Rhymes on the verses. Damn. Me and him was just talking the other day. He said, find me a worthy opponent. <laughs> Missy. Like, this sounds sound like a, a Maximus on Gladiator. <laughs> Either Missy or LL. I think LL, I think that would be a good Missy thing. or LL. LL would be the thing. I wouldn't see, I can't see Missy because it's too much respect between them two. Mm -hmm. And there's no disrespect between LL and, and Buster, but men tend to, it's a better duel as opposed to he's going to be nice to Missy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. He ain't going to be nice to LL. It's and LL saying. ain't going to be nice to him. I get what you're saying. But performance wise, I can see. Cause if he Missy... brings Spliff Star, it's a wrap. You know Spliff. You know if he, he brings, brings Spliff Star. I'm going to tell y'all this. <laughs> I said this for the past 20 years. It's only two motherfuckers I'm not getting on stage after <sighs> Buster Rhymes and Spliff Star. <laughs> <laughs> you thought I was going to say two I others. I was going to say two others. No, <laughs> them two. I will not, I refuse to. They are the epitome yeah. of showmanship, mm -hmm. just energy and what a show's supposed to be. I used to go on tour with them, right? And I used to get on after them and I used to be so mad because sometimes the crowd be like, we already out of energy. We ain't got <laughs> nothing left. So as far as getting in the versus battle with Buster Rhymes, if he brings Spliff Star on the performance side, it's curtains. Tim could come out with Missy. They could do the little shoulder yep. stuff they used to do in the Missy video. Have her dancers. Coitins. <laughs> <laughs> the last time you were up here, uh, I think two times ago, you, you were talking about your top five, and you didn't mention him, and then we talked about that, and he got a little upset, but we see you squashed it out. How was that conversation? I know y'all had that Man, I, I love Eminem, and the thing is that we love hip-hop so much, we competitive, we battle rappers, so that was supposed to trigger that in him. But we brothers and we family, so we learned to 
to appreciate each other for what we do and how we get down. And we had a long conversation about the respect that we have for each other and the way we need to talk in public about each other. Mm -hmm. And I felt like I was out of pocket. You know what I'm saying? And I apologized to him and I let him know. And I'm just better at myself. You know what I'm saying? I make mistakes. I ain't perfect. I'm Snoop Dogg. Well, mm -hmm. cheers to the Super Bowl halftime show. Yeah. Oh, what you, you know about that? And M and, uh, what you know about that then, huh? <laughs> Mary J. Blige. Hello. How did you feel when you got that call? In L.A.? Dr. Dre is one of my closest associates. So mm -hmm. when I when I knew he got the call, I was figuring that I was going to get a call soon. But to, to add... Eminem, Kendrick, and Mary J. Blige is like special. So what kind of Dre and Snoop we gonna see now? Cause you know it's, it's, it's a lot of Dre and Snoop. So what, I, what, what y'all gonna do on that halftime show? Too. It is PG-13, but remember we made clean versions. Okay, okay, okay. I, I would want to hear some Death Row. Yes! It slide a G thing or something in there. I mean that just, that record definitely just, thing in there. gotta have G thing, right? Yeah. I definitely would want to hear Still representing for them gangsters all across the world. And California love. Definitely. Gotta do Jen and Juice. Gotta do California love, too. But remember, it's not just me and him. Mm -hmm. You gotta let Eminem slide out and do his, uh, nowadays everybody, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They gotta bop that. Then you gotta let Kendrick come out and bop one with him. And then I'm sure Mary J. Blige yep. gonna pop that thing she got with him. So I'm anxious to see exactly what the format and how it's gonna roll out. I'm just here to show up and show out and be there for my guy. You think it was political that they had to have five hip-hop icons, and you know, Mary's the queen of hip-hop, so on the halftime show just to get it done? Because I feel like it could have just been you and Dre, and y'all could have bought everybody up. It could have, but shout out to Jay-Z for um, going to war mm -hmm. and making that thing happen, putting the first hip-hop act on the stage. And, you know, people don't give him credit for a lot of things that he do. He moves his hand mysteriously behind the scenes, mm -hmm. and he does a lot of great things for people. And I want to give him a shout-out for fighting for Dr. Dre, because I know that... That's a part of my legacy that he fought for. So I appreciate you. I heard it was a fight. It was between you and somebody, one other act. They didn't want us up there? I, I don't know if they didn't want y'all, but I just thought it was a little... Oh, they was going to say either uh, them or the, uh, yeah, us? Yeah, 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 yeah. But come on, man. It's not like, <laughs> come on, man. This ain't yeah, it wouldn't make no sense. Long no Beach Compton, Eaglewood. Yeah, Taylor Swift wouldn't have made no sense. Oh, man, yeah, please. <laughs> Nah, Ellis Wood wouldn't have made no what sense. What is this? I Heart Awards? What's going on? <laughs> We've been begging Kanye to come out there and rush on this ticket. Yeah, Kanye, I got a ticket for you, my <laughs> I got the back door open for you. I'm going to let you in. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> now, you, you got some really dope women artists on this album. Was that intentional? Very. Okay. Very intentional. And a lot of it just came to me. It just came my way. Um, some of the artists just were brought to me. And I didn't even have a deal at the time. I just was making great music and people was coming to the studio. And I was like, damn, these females sound good. And they don't sound like the girls that's out right now. And they saying something a little different. So I was like, let me go in and make some records with them. And we just made records. And like, that's what I'm about right now. I'm about just the feeling. Mm -hmm. If it feel good, feel good to you, must be good for you. What Talk inspires you to still make music? Because, you know, you do so much, but you're always in the studio. You're always listening. What inspires you to still listen? And, and when I go out. Because I'm a DJ, too. I get that DJ bread, too. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. When I go out... Sorry, and I'm, Envy. Now, the DJ bread went up after the pandemic, Boy, too, you better know it. Didn't it, didn't it, didn't it though? Boy. Especially you if you, especially bag, if you can rap some of your own songs from oh. the DJ bread. <laughs> <laughs> can you do that? <laughs> I can do that. I can rap some of your songs. <laughs> I mean, if I had to choose, I mean, damn. Oh, Snoop, DJ, and an Envy. <laughs> Come on, man. This I would take Snoop too. You know, you know what? I'll get both. Envy, just open up. You know how I, do, you know how I present it? DJ Snoopadelic versus Snoop Dogg. I That's saw the, that. Wow. So I'm giving you a little bit of everything. And then when I'm out there DJing, I'm listening to music, right? And I'm like, it don't feel good when you ain't got no new music and you're in the club. You got to play from 30 years ago or 25 years ago. So it makes you want to say, I need to get me a hot record right now. So when the young rappers call me, if it's NBA Young Boy or this rapper... I'm quick to get with them. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I don't even charge them because mm -hmm. it's about knowing what they're about to do for me but thinking what I'm about to do for them. Mm -hmm. All right, well, don't move. We got more with Snoop when we come back. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Night. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We're still kicking it with Snoop. Charlamagne? You know, Snoop, you ever thought about doing a documentary on you and your evolution? I'm talking about from the beginning when you first came out, Wild Snoop, Bitches ain't but holding the tricks to 50-year-old grandfather Snoop who has seen so much life has evolved as a man, a father, a, a husband. Have you ever thought about that? Just showing people that growth is possible? Not really, but if I do it, I think you should probably interview me. I think that'd be dope because mm -hmm. you'll get some good insight on your perspective. You're looking in from the outside. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You've seen the wild Snoop. You've seen the one that was on death row, the one that grew up on No Limit, the one that came out with Pharrell that 
became a father, became a football coach to where I'm at now. So you would be able to have a different perspective, and I would like that because it's a different angle. Absolutely. It's I, wild watching you and Fat Joe change and evolve. Right. And you know where most of our evolution came from? At Minister Farrakhan's house after um, Biggie got killed. Wow. I called Mr. Farrakhan, and I wanted to get with all of the rappers, and he helped me put together a day at his house. Mm -hmm. And Fat Joe drove on a bus, and he um he had some words for Ice Cube about you know the West Side Connect as far as like how the East Coast loved Ice Cube and protected him and had his back when N.W.A. went bad on him and how could he do this? But it was just a minor conversation that was needed, mm -hmm. and it made me respect Fat Joe. Because I seen he was a real man and he really loved Ice Cube. And for him to say that, that took a lot of love to say that. I'm hurt behind you doing that. And we love you and spoke for New York. And me and him got real cool and close after that to where I watched him grow. He watching me grow. And just to be on his podcast, to be able to see us both hold that conversation and be grown men, it's evolution. How do you and your wife manage to separate business from obviously that's a super personal relationship you're married right. but she's your manager so are there times that she can talk you like do things that you don't want to do or y'all bump heads that's some fly on ass the, on the, the boss, business have your wife be a manager that's fly. does she have the final say <laughs> she got the only say yes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying but that's what I needed because mm -hmm. can't nobody else challenge me or you know put me in a level of understanding and respect now especially in the business I mastered this shit. it's called show business when I was on death row records I mastered the show when I got with Master P, I mastered the business. And now I'm trying to extend that by bringing my family in so I can teach my family this show mm -hmm. business in case something is to ever happen to me. My wife is in control of everything. Not some mother over here that don't know me or my family and controlling my whole estate like some of my homies that's rest in peace. Like, it's people that's not even their color running their mm -hmm. shit and running it up. Mm -hmm. I don't want that. I want my wife and my grandkids and my family to have the rights to Snoop Dogg everything. Do you still smoke crazy? What's the last time? What, what's, how long can Snoop go without smoking? I know you gave I'm waiting for you to a hair up so I can get back in my uh. pen. <laughs> <laughs> you on the clock, Envy, while you, you don't bullshit. lit up in here. Yeah, you don't I know, yeah, but I would, I would never do that again. Now, 50 said you won't put the weed down to, for shooting. That's, that's what he did say. <laughs> I couldn't help it, but when I was Pastor Swift, I did, you know, give myself a moment to, you know, find my character. And, but Pastor Swift is a, he's a sinner that's changed his life. So, okay. you know, most preachers are like that. They got to come from the world in order to express the world to you. He can't be flawless and clean. He's got to come from that side in order to be able to relate to you, to know that he changed his life to help you try to change your life. That's every human on this planet. That's why I hate this whole cancel culture era that we How in. How can they? Exactly. Humans will always fail How many times you've been canceled? Because they cancel every about seven times. I remember that. that. At least once a year. <laughs> At least. More than that. But what does it mean? Nothing. That's the algorithm. That's the algorithm. That's some <laughs> computer telling people that you don't like this and don't like this. But people are people. They have their own emotions, their own feelings, and you should be able to speak for yourself and not some majority of people speak for you. And we love you commentating the Olympics and all the fights too, man. That, that sounds that's so, lane. so much better. That's than, my lane? You know, yeah, it stuff, it seems yeah. like you enjoy it. Yeah, that's it why so like, you better. have so much fun. What isn't Snoop's lane? What I can't know. you do? He can cook with Martha Stewart. He can cook with Martha Stewart, he's a commentator. <laughs> I want to know what you've told, what you said no to. Uh, bungee jumping. Mm. Uh, they wanted me to play a woman in uh, some kind of TV show, and they wanted me to wear a dress. So I was like, next rapper. <laughs> <laughs> you always seem so cool, calm, and collected. Have you dealt with anxiety your whole life, or is this something you're just noticing? I think I dealt with it my whole life, because I grew up in a... Um, great neighborhood but it was so much going on mm -hmm. and I was able to be out in the mix my mother allowed me to go outside and to, and to be a kid you know what I'm saying and to learn and to grow and I feel like it taught me how to deal with life because when you see life up close and personal when you deal with death at an early age when you deal with life when you're dealing with mental health it just prepares you to practice to get ready for it as an adult so I feel like all of my things that I learned as a kid prepared me as a, as a man for what I'm dealing with now yeah, I don't know how you're doing it this week, my brother. Mm -hmm. I would have canceled everything. Man, I, I wanted to. I was, like, when I got the news, I had, like, a, a show that night. I went to my room. I cried a little bit. And I was like, damn, what would my mama want me to do? Mm -hmm. She would want me to get in front of these people and give them a show. And I went out there and I gave it to them. And the last song I played was Stand By Me. God. And it's man. a particular part of the song where it say, I won't cry, I won't cry. And I took my glasses off and I didn't cry. In my heart, I wanted to, but I just was like, I can't. And they they was giving it back to me, and I was like, I got to keep doing this. This is my mama talking to me, telling me, 
you better not stop. You better keep going, and I'm going to be with you the whole step of the way. Have you and Dre got a chance to love on each other? Because I know yeah. he just lost yeah. one of his anchors in his life. And that's crazy because I had called him and sent him a positive message mm -hmm. the day before my mother passed away, just being his friend. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And he got the message, and he hit me back. He was like, can I post it? I'm like, yeah, go ahead, cuz. Like, you know, people need to know that how we get out behind closed doors. That we really love each other. And he posted. Then the next day, I get the news about my mama. And he hit me on FaceTime. He's like, man, my mom. Because him and my mom was cool. Just checking on me, making sure I'm straight. Mm -hmm. That's what we do as brothers. I got a lot of lot of positive calls. So that's why my spirit is right. Mm -hmm. Minister Farrakhan gave me probably the greatest prayer I ever heard in my life. Mm. To let me know that my mother being out of body is her being present with Allah. Mm. And that's that's the thrill of life, mm -hmm. to get to that point. 100%. We're sending you positive energy, Absolutely. love, and light always, Snoop, man. Because you, you, you're such a light to the world, so we, we got to make sure that you always are where you need to be. You hey, know? man, I'm, I'm just a reflection of my mother, man. She she taught me everything I know. You know, shout out to my daddy for being there and teaching me how to be a man. My mother taught me all of the love, the qualities that you see in me, the, the, the storytelling, the, the happiness, the fun, mm -hmm. the joy. That was my mother. She was the life of the party. You know what I'm saying? She was all of that. To me, she was my best friend for my first 10 years in this world. So my little brother was born. And then, you know what I'm saying? You know mm -hmm. how that go. Absolutely. She was with the little brother. She the little brother became my little It, it had to be. Hey, I got kids. I understand. <laughs> you, know you know what I'm saying? So that's understand. why you so loving. Because you definitely the type to be like, man, all y'all come eat, man. Come eat. We got food over here. That's how we get out, man. My mother, <laughs> my mother is so special. When my uncle, you know, he was on drugs and he had a son, which was my cousin. And he was in one of those homes. I was like 13 years old. And my mother talked to me and my brother. And she was like, I'm going to adopt Marvin. And she went and adopted my little brother and gave him our last name. Mm. And his birthday was on the same day as mine. And it, it didn't even, I didn't even have no envy towards him. I actually loved him and I loved my mother more. Now that I'm thinking about it, for her looking out for family and adopting him and giving him our last name and just showing that kind of love. And that's who I am to this day. I'm like, I'm an exact replication of who she is. That's, it's absolutely. a beautiful thing that you were able to do great things for her too, for her to see you blossom into who you are. That was the beauty. And she, and you know what's crazy? She dreamed of me being a preacher. I really. can still see that happening. Right. So, but look at what I'm planning on BMF. Mm -hmm. That's right. Before she passed away. Mm. It's like, this is the spirit of everything just coming back full circle. And I made a gospel album, yeah. right? I made it for my mother and my grandmother. My grandmother had passed away. But when I had made the record, I had my mother come to the studio and I played it from top to bottom with all of the musicians. And she was so happy because she was fighting for me for so many years in the church to defend me. And I didn't give her nothing to fight with. Wow. And I finally gave her something. He gave her some That's ammunition. Wow. You know what she said? She said, now I don't have to talk no more. You can fight for yourself. Ooh. Ooh. Yes. That was heavy. Ooh. That was heavy. You know, I always wondered, like, you know, when you thought about, like, what C. Dolores Tucker was doing to you back in the day, did you ever, you look back now and say, well, she was right, kind of? She was right. All of them was right. We was young and dumb, and, you know, we needed aunties. Mm -hmm. They just didn't know how to talk. Yeah, you know? Yeah. When your auntie, you got certain aunties that'd be like, come over here, boy, let me talk to you. Then you got certain aunties, I'm going to beat your ass, come here. You run from them. Exactly. <laughs> and that's what it was. And remember, we were teenagers or either becoming young adults, so we could use our voice back like, shut up. You ain't talking to me like that. Mm -hmm. But if you got the right auntie, you respect him and you like, yeah, auntie, sure. Uh huh. Like Maxine, Queen Man, Maxine please. Waters. We don't play no games with Maxine Waters. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. she's a frontliner. Mm -hmm. And she's always been our auntie. She's always put her arms around us and not try to scold us, but teach us. Mm -hmm. The big difference. Yeah, we got to do that conversation. Because, I mean, your, your evolution alone, it needs to be documented, man. People need to see that. Hey, I'm, I'm trying every day, Charlamagne. I'm just trying to be better every day at, at, at mastering me. And once people understand how to master themselves, then we're going to be a better world. Instead of trying to duplicate or be like somebody else, be yourself. Well, listen, Algorithm is coming out soon. Let, let's Snoop go November smoke, 12th. man. We appreciate 12th. you for joining us, Icon brother. living. Absolutely. Hey, man, y'all got my spirit right. I didn't know how I was going to be this morning. Um, we love you. You got our spirit I love y'all right too, too, man. And this is, what I'm, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm supposed to be back in front of people, chopping it up representing my mama through the spirit of who I am. Absolutely. And being strong and being positive and not being sad and crying and being weak, but celebrating the life and just thanking God that I had an angel for a mother.
But that's not weak, we though. Love crying you, cry, crying yeah, and giving weak. yourself a moment to grieve, that ain't weak at all. That's you, human. That's human. But what, you wanna, can we play a record off the album? Mm -hmm. Which mm -hmm. one you Let's want? play Anxiety. Yeah. Go ahead. Charlemagne requested Anxiety. Let's right, play that Anxiety. Right. Charlemagne, Charlemagne wants Anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Hey, that was Anxiety, man. Uh, the, the artist's name is Malaya. Malaya, am I saying it right? I think Malaya. You said Malaya. Yep. Yeah, Malaya from the Algorithm album. That's out what November 11th, I think they said. Mm hmm. I think. But either oh. way, salute to Snoop, the icon living, man. I'm glad we can love on Snoop this morning, man. Absolutely. Shout out to Nori, always on the check. -in. What up, Nori? Salute to N.O. All right, let's get to the rumors. Let's talk LeBron. This is the Rumor Report with Angela Yee. Rumor has it. Rumor, rumor, rumor. On the Breakfast Club. So listen up. Nah, 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 nah. All right, now let's discuss Squid Game. So, LeBron James and Anthony Davis during a news conference was discussing his thoughts about the show's finale. Yeah, I don't like the ending. Well, I know I know they started off with a season two, but like, get on the fight. What's in the dark, bro? Like, what are you doing? I feel the same way. I said the same exact thing. I did not like the ending at all. Mind your damn business. Now, the creator of Squid Game actually caught wind of this, and his response... Uh, was have you seen Space Jam 2? And then he said, LeBron James is cool and can say what he wants. I respect that. I'm very thankful he watched the whole series. And then he said, if he has his own ending that would satisfy him, maybe he could make his own sequel. He didn't say that. Yes, he did. He did. He did. <laughs> have you seen Space Jam 2? Did y'all see Space Jam 2? Well, listen, neither one of them are wrong. LeBron can have his opinion on Squid Game right. and he can have his opinion on Space Jam 2, but I didn't like the ending either. Not because the ending was whack. I'm just... Thinking of it from a logical perspective, nah, what you about to do? You about to take all this money and, and go back? Whack. And it was whack. And what you going to do? Now he also went on to say to LeBron, "I'll check." He said, "If he maybe he could make his own sequel, I'll check it out and maybe send him a message saying I liked your whole show except the ending." The foul thing about this is LeBron wasn't. It wasn't on camera. He was talking to his man. His man came up. AD came up. They were talking about it. He said, "Yeah, I mean, like and they were way, just talking." Listen, uh, Space Jam Two made a lot of money. Okay. Did y'all see it? I don't, did I see Space Jam? Yeah, I feel like I did. They didn't make money off of you. <laughs> no, I feel like it was on Disney. No, it was on HBO Max. I feel like I watched it at the house. You I don't, like I don't, it I really don't remember. I really don't remember. I didn't see it. It's one of those things where the kids it. be watching yeah, it. My daughter just asked me, lad, I want to see Space Jam too. I feel like I did see Space Jam. All right, Jam. well, LeBron responded and said, this can't be real, right? I hope not. And he put a whole bunch of laughing emojis. I can't tell if I saw Space Jam too. Who got sucked down the golf hole? Both of them? What, what, that was the you, first one. What you doing in your house over there? <laughs> no, you don't. You never seen Space Jam, then. If you're saying that. All right, guys. <laughs> you never saw Space Jam. I did see. Now, Space Jam. NBA no, young boy has been granted plot. his 1.5 million dollar bill, and he has a very strict Suck house arrest, dirt. though. So he has been granted that bond, and he'll be released from. He's been released from custody. He has to go to uh, Utah, and that's where he'll be serving house arrest while he awaits trial in his federal case. So I'm sure he's happy. I thought he got released like a couple days ago. Though. No, there was a, a delay with that because he had another case mm. to deal with. So now he's free. Yes, he's, no, he's finally free. on his way to Utah. No house arrest. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm out of jail. He plans to build a recording studio at his new house, hire a security firm that's staffed by former soldiers to patrol the grounds, and he does. They did uh, impose a, a curfew on visitors though, and he won't be allowed to have more than three people at his residence at one time, and they also have to be pre-approved. Why Utah though? Um, they said he had some type of um, tutor that was based that lived in Utah. Mm. So his plan was to kind of go out there and. Oh, that's dope. Mm -hmm. So clearly, it's uh, an adult in his life that is connected with him on some level that gets through to him that he wants to be close to, right? Yeah, that's and it's it also like. probably like just some place where he won't get into any trouble, hopefully. And you know, know. sometimes it's hard to be home around everything. Can you have is Utah? Is can you really have more than one wife in Utah? Is that a real thing? If you're a Mormon. You got to be a Mormon? I don't know. I don't know. I'm not going to spread no false information mm. up here. Mm -mm. All right. Now, Chrissy Teigen was promoting her newly released cookbook, Cravings, all together. She was on the Today Show, and this was yesterday. She reflected on the bullying scandal that happened, the online bullying scandal. This is the first time that she ever talked about it. And here's what she said she learned from when she was online bullying. You know, you, I think you learn so much in the moments where you do lose so much. You lose it all. Your world is kind of turned upside down. Um, for me, it was a big moment of like, wow, I need to find out 
how I can be better, mm -hmm. how I can grow from this, learn from this. And honestly, I think, you know, you don't want to say, oh, there's that old cliche, like, mm -hmm. I'm glad it happened. Mm -hmm. But I was truly, it made me a stronger person, a better person. You know, I became, like, that's when I, I went sober. I went clean. I'm actually 100 days sober today. And I'm like, so sober? excited. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, she's right, you know, but uh, humans will always fail a purity test. That's why you have to laugh at all these uh, cancelers, because at some point you can and will be canceled. Trust me. Everybody's got something they said, did, tweeted in the past that uh, people can hold them accountable for. And then you will get a turn at some point. So all you right. better show grace. Now, Chrissy Teigen also discussed the loss of their son, Jack, and whether or not she's processed that. And Difficult to not moment. have really processed that, mm -hmm. you know to explain that to your children what happened and and it's and to have to explain it to yourself because a lot of it you know I threw myself into the cookbook mm -hmm. um, instead of processing mm -hmm. it um, so yeah it took a lot of therapy a lot of uh, you know I, mm -hmm. I, I needed to be clear that's why honestly going sober was so important was it, I needed to be clear-headed I needed to be able to understand what I was taking in in therapy and really absorb it instead of uh, like you mm -hmm. know just hiding behind alcohol now, she also did an interview with a parenting site called Scary Mommy and shared that the family travels with uh, Jack's ashes, their late son Jack's ashes. Mm. And so she said her daughter and her son are also involved in that process. She said whenever, wh whether we go on vacation or something, they always say, don't forget baby Jack. And then I have to pack him up. And then we get to where we're going. They're like, oh, my gosh, he must be thirsty. And then they'll put a little glass of water next to his little box of ashes and wow. be a part of that. That's a lot. All right. Well, I'm Angela Yee, and that is your rumor report. All right. Thank you, Miss Yee. Charlamagne, who are you giving your donkey to? Man, I want to talk about this hiker in Colorado, man. The reason I want to talk about this hiker in Colorado because I kind of feel him. Kind of feel him just a little bit, but we'll discuss for after the hour. All right. We'll get to that next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Your mornings will never be the same. Now, everybody's talking about TikTok right now, even sports fans. Now, Charlamagne, you seen this? Why are you talking to me about football and trying to show me TikTok, sir? Because your team is on there. Their fans are on there. The players are on there. This is where the real talk is happening. There's like literally everything you could think of right now on TikTok. You just got to see it. You are a donkey. It's time for Donkey of the Day. Donkey of the Day, huh? I'm gonna fatten all that shit around your eye. They want this man to throw them blows, man. They wait for Charlemagne to tap these gloves. Let's go. They had to make a judgment of who was going to be on the Donkey of the Day. They chose you. Yes. It's a breakfast club, bitches. Who's Donkey of the Day today? Well, Donkey of the Day for Wednesday, October 27th goes to a hiker in Colorado who got lost on a mountain for 24 hours. Now, I know what you're thinking. Why, oh, why would Uncle Shala, Brother Leonard, give a man who got lost for 24 hours hiking donkey of the day? Well, it's a tough one. It's a tough one because on one hand, I feel him. On the other hand, I'm like, I don't think he wanted to be saved. Let me explain. See, this man was reported missing after he didn't return from an expedition on October 18th on Mount Elbert. Mount Elbert is the highest peak in the state of Colorado. Now, he was lost, clearly. But sometimes folks be lost to us. But to them, they just outside, all right? This kind of feels like one of those situations, even though it's not. I know y'all think I sound like Rafiki and the Lion King right now, but listen to me, pay attention, follow this, because it will all make sense in one second. Now, if people think you're lost, the first thing I would assume to do is call your phone, right? That's what they tried to do to this hiker. And this is where it gets tricky for me, because trust me when I tell you, I feel how this hiker be feeling. Let's go to KGTV, ABC 10 for the report, please. We're looking into a story that seems hard to believe. It claims a lost hiker ignored calls from a rescue cruise because he didn't recognize the phone number. And it's actually true. The hiker was reported missing last week after he failed to return from a trek on Mount Elpert in Colorado. And the Lake County search and rescue team says they repeatedly tried calling the hiker's cell phone. But the man never answered because he didn't recognize the number. The hiker did safely return to his place of lodging 24 hours later with no idea that anyone had been looking for him. Raise your hand if you don't uh, answer unrecognized phone numbers, okay? If I you don't. If you're driving, blow the horn, all right? I just assume that an unrecognized phone number is a bill collector, all right? And you're going to a voicemail that I will never check. 
Now, I have to ask another question. How lost are you really if you don't answer the phone when people are looking for you simply because you don't recognize the phone number? I feel him. Okay, I don't answer the phone for numbers I don't know. In fact, too many numbers I don't know. Calling me is one of the main reasons I changed my phone number. But here's the thing. I don't know if this hiker necessarily deserves donkey of the day. Sounds like the people who were looking for him deserve donkey of the day because they're trying to save a person that didn't need saving. Maybe. Number one, he didn't answer a number he didn't know. Therefore, he clearly wasn't stressing. He clearly didn't think he was in danger. Okay, number two. Did you hear the end of the news report? Can we play that? just the end of the news report? Is there a way to do that? The hiker spent the night searching for the trail and bouncing between different trails to find the Oh no, that's the not what I want. That's not that wasn't it. At the end of it, at the end of it, they said he made his way back to his lodging. Right? If this guy was really lost, I can't tell. But if he really was lost, round of applause for his focus. Give this man some applause, Red. Okay. I mean, if I'm lost trying to figure my way back, I don't want to talk to anyone on the phone either. You ever have your GPS going, driving? But somebody called you and interrupts the GPS or you're driving and talking and you missing what the GPS is telling you because this person wants to talk on the phone. What's your chat about? OK, I miss me exit. All right. That's how this man's brain was working in this moment. He couldn't be bothered. He was too busy bouncing from trail to trail trying to figure things out. Now, let's go to this news report from SACB.com. Let me hear this one. The hiker spent the night searching for the trail and bouncing between different trails to find okay. a trailhead where they had parked. Rescuer said. I don't know if he was lost. I really don't. I really don't know if this man was truly lost. But if he was, like the media is reporting, I need to know his reasoning for not answering his phone because I need that kind of discipline in my life. Can somebody go interview this man? Please have a conversation. I need to be able to ignore my phone and other distractions under duress are not just like, you know, this individual was. I was always taught uh, desperate people do desperate things. And, you know, answering unrecognized phone numbers is an act of desperation. So clearly there was nothing desperate about this man because he didn't feel the need to answer his phone while he was so-called lost in the mountains. I am lost in the woods. There is a prophet, OK, a beacon of light named Project Pat, who once said, don't save her. She don't want to be saved. I think this applies to this hiker. All right. Don't save this man. He didn't want to be saved. As stupid as we want to call this, man, if you got to let a hoe be a hoe, you got to let a hiker be a hiker. But we can still give him the credit he deserves for being, I guess, what we would call stupid. Sometimes people just don't want to be bothered. But give this hiker the biggest hee-haw anyway. <coughs> just in case he was really lost. All right. All you got to do is pick up the phone and not say anything. Pick up the phone, baby. Pick up the phone. And don't just be quiet. But then, but no, that would be if, if if people think you're lost, right? And they call your phone, and somebody picks up the phone and don't say nothing. Now they really gonna be distraught. Now they gonna really want the law enforcement and everybody. Involved. Oh, you pick up the phone and you go hello. That's even worse. Now and they then gonna they say ask so for you, and you're like, she's not available. Now it was like a strange <laughs> phone, a strange what? voice <laughs> picked up my phone. <laughs> a strange that? voice picked up his phone. I really think he's in trouble Wrong now. Wrong number. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. What you, voice you, was that? You, yeah. you would have the whole feds after her. Everybody would be looking for that person after that. You want to make goodness. sure it's not a bill collector. All right. Well, thank you for that donkey today. Mm -hmm. Ask Yee. 800 585 1051. If you need relationship advice or any type of advice, call Yee now. It's the Hello. Breakfast Club. Good morning. <laughs> What, 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 what you want to know? Baby mama issues? Need some words of wisdom? Call up now for Ask You. 800-585-1051. The Breakfast Club. Power 105.1. Come on. Need relationship advice? Need personal advice? Just need real advice. Call up now for Ask You. Keep the bread. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. It's time for Ask Yee. Hello, who's this? Hi, it's Kayla. Hey, Kayla, what's your question for Yee? So, me and my husband have been having marital problems. We're supposed to make a year in a couple weeks, and we've been fighting like crazy. This guy has the nerve to always accuse me of cheating, but instead of talking it out, he stays out all night. Mm. But let me do something like that, and it's a problem. Right. And that's just disrespectful, right? When you're married and you guys live together, even if you're arguing, even if he's sleeping on the couch, 
He still should be sleeping at home. The first night, he locked me out of my own house. What? And I had the key. What? Yes, I have the key, of course, because I'm on the lease. Like, what did he think this was? So he was shook when I came upstairs and went straight and took a shower after working hard all day. Where did he stay? Then, Where does he stay when he goes out? That's the thing. I have no idea. Oh, uh-uh. This is not right. This is not... Not right at all. Do you think that he gets into arguments with you and accuses you of things because he's doing something? Low key. Because the fact that you don't know where he goes, he keeps on getting into arguments and then staying out all night and using that as an excuse, locking you out of your own home. It is not just that. It's also just an ultimate disrespect to you. Like, you guys live there together. You both pay the bills. I just don't understand how he thinks that this is acceptable behavior for a married couple. Even if you weren't married and you were just dating, you don't do things like that. Exactly. And he had the nerve to tell my landlord, get my landlord involved, first of all. Get my landlord involved for no reason. And tells my landlord that I've married him for a free trip. First of all, I make my own money. I go to work and I go home. So how's he going to tell me that? And I pay... Every other bill in the house. How is it free? Wow. I just think this, right? If he decides that he doesn't owe you the respect of coming home at night, if he doesn't have the respect to tell you where he is, if he doesn't respect the relationship that he that he has with you, if he says these nasty, negative things about you to other people, maybe he needs to go find his own place. And y'all need to separate and, and figure out how to move forward if you can't work it out. That's the thing. We agreed to marriage counseling right before this fight. But like I said, let me have done some things like this. It would have been a total problem. He accuses me of cheating when I go to work and go home. Like, yeah. who has the time to cheat? Sounds like he has a guilty conscience. That's exactly what it sounds like. And I'm going to get to the bottom of it because he FBI stands for Female Bureau of Investigation. Oh, my gosh. But you know what? You shouldn't even have to do that to your own husband. The fact that you can't even get straight answers or speak to him and have him just tell you the truth. Because relationships are built on trust, right? Big facts. So the fact that you have to do all this investigating and you kind of already know what it is, that sucks. Like, nobody wanna has to live their life where they're going to work and then they have to come home and it's just more fighting. Like, when do you get a break? This is sucks. And I agree for some space, but don't stay out all night and not expect me to think that you're not cheating. So when is this and counseling... When is this counseling going to start? Who knows? He's not the type to communicate. He'll stonewall me have this blank face and not want to communicate like what kind of a marriage is that for all that you shouldn't have asked me to marry you right well i think let's get these uh Let's get these sessions scheduled on the books. You need to make some ultimatums as in you are not to spend the night out of this house ever again. Okay. And if he continues to do that, then that just means that he's not respecting you or your um, or your relationship. And you really got to figure out how to move forward. But I think you really need to schedule that appointment to get into counseling to see what is going on. I ain't going to lie. I try to... Um, you know, give the best advice. and But in reality, I would definitely have to find out where he's going and what he's doing. A hundred percent. All right. <laughs> well, I wish you the best of luck. And I really do hope that y'all can somehow uh, work through this and, and break through and communicate. I hope it's nothing. But what it seems like, it does seem like he got something else going on. I absolutely believe that a hundred percent. Okay. So listen, your intuition is telling you what it is. If you got to go and get those facts yourself, just know when you find something out, you got to act on it. Don't just find out to find out and be mad. That's true. Absolutely. Because if you don't want to know, don't go looking. But if you do want to know, and it means that some things are going to have to change and you're going to actually take some type of action, just think about what you're going to do. Worst case scenario, if you find this out, if you find that out, then you have to make sure that you respect yourself too. Absolutely, Angela. You're saying all the right things. I'm going to get to the bottom of it. And then when I find out, it is what it is. Like, I'm not about to waste a whole another portion of my life to somebody who don't appreciate me. All right. I'm a gem. That's damn right, girl. Mm-hmm. All right. High five. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Angela. All right. Take care, honey. All right, ask ye, 800-585-1051. If you need relationship advice or any type of advice, hit ye now. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Here's some real advice with Angela Yee. It's Ask Yee.
Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We're in the middle of Ask Yee. Hello, who's this? Yes, this is Mr. Dominique Pastor Jones. Hey, what's okay. up, Pastor? What's your question for you? I'm, I'm coming with man with, and uh, you know my wife is uh, she, she's not a, a, a overly zealous person, but my ex wife is still trying to get somewhere in the picture. We we kind of had this relationship at one point where no matter what, you know, we would just always you know stay copacetic and you know keep the relationship platonic, that you know by any means. Okay, and, so you and your ex wife uh, have a good platonic relationship. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, the, the situation is, you know, my my ex wife, my my coma wife, you know, she's uh, she's not, it's not that she's jealous about it, but I can tell that it, it bothers her. Okay. You know what I mean? I want to tell her, and then we'll just just cut the situation just down, just you know. But it, you know, and it's not like it's a bad thing, you know. All right. So your like current you wife friendly. doesn't like you being friendly with your ex wife. She doesn't say it, but I can feel it. So what is it? She gets an attitude about it. He does, like, little things. Like, you know, for a particular instance, my, my ex-wife called the other day, and it was just, it was just something, because um, we're still working out the bills and stuff, just separating that type of stuff from the, from the past. It was some bills that was caught up in, in between both of our names and stuff like that. So she was calling, and I know I just let my wife know, you know, even though it, it, it wasn't you know, it wasn't nothing going on, it's just the bills and stuff like that. So it's just, like, excess fat from the last relationship. Do you and your ex-wife have children together? Uh, no, no, but my comment, my comment one, me and my comment. Okay, so you don't really have to continue to speak to your ex-wife. You just, you're just trying to tie up some loose ends. Yeah. I think you always have to protect the relationship that you're in now. If there's something that's making your current wife uncomfortable, then you have to fix that. That's the priority. Yeah. And you said she hasn't said anything to you about it, but that's a conversation where you can say, let me know if there's anything that bothers you. Let me know if there's a better way you would like for me to handle things because no matter what, you are my priority. I never want you to be uncomfortable. And if, you know, if there's certain boundaries you need me to set, then I have no problem doing that. But I will say that you cannot continue this friendship with your ex-wife it's un- if it's uncomfortable for your current wife. So you have to figure out how to, for sure, cut that down. Yes. And, and you know what? I can't even really call it, you know, just a friendship, you know. Right, but why are you, you know, still you speaking? Know, why are you still speaking to her? No, because I said because of, of the... Just because of those bills. Past okay. Past that should be taken care of now, right? Yeah, you know, it's being taken care of at the moment, but, you know, I, it's just still lingering. And I just, you know, I know why right from wrong. But, you know, it's not, it's not like I'm doing something, you know, calling her to any time of the day or something like that. It's just regular. Okay, but why do you guys still have bills together now? It was just a past bill that was still tied down. So Okay, so then there shouldn't um, be any reason, there shouldn't be any reason for y'all to continue to communicate. It, it's nothing. Just a thing. It's nothing else. That's all it was. Was you know just a bill and stuff like that. But, but you know, like I said, it's just I can tell that it's it's the situation is just still lingering. And even though that I'm not just trying to give it any sort of attention. Okay. Well, sir, don't give you it know, any more attention. Move on with your current wife and do what you need to do yeah. to make her happy and have a conversation. Don't be afraid to ask her questions. Ask what what you need to be right. doing better and accept that and receive right. that. Yes, thank you so much, Miss Angela Lee. Okay, uh, you're I welcome. I want to say I love you. I love you guys so much, Mr. DJ Envy, Mr. Charlemagne. I listen to you guys every morning. Thank you, every King. Every morning. I just love you guys. Thank okay. you, King. We love you more, listen, King. Listen. We'll pray for you, Pastor. You know, Sister Charlemagne, that's you? Yes, this is Sister Charlemagne. Oh, I thought you said sister. Oh, I know. I'm sorry. I thought you said sister. We'll pray. We'll pray for you, Pastor. How All are right. you, Pastor? Yes, you good? Yes. Hey, listen. Listen, listen. Whenever you get a chance, uh, just just check out uh, Mr. Mr. Public Weed. You're Mr. Public Weed. Public okay. Weed, man. Yeah. Oh, okay. We're gonna check you out, man. We're sending you healing energy, Pastor. Okay. Yes, thank you. Pray, son. pray, thank pray for, pray for us too, Pastor. Please. What? Yes, I will. Breakfast club. Breakfast club. You get it? Yes. What church is Calm this? Calm down, Pastor. Yeah, what okay. church is this, Pastor? <laughs> Why y'all judging this man? I'm not. I, just, I, I just said, what, what church, church is this? Was church, church supposed to be away? No, I, I said, what church is this? Pastor. What church? Don't you want to know? Yes, I do. It sound like okay. y'all, y'all sounded very judgmental in y'all voices, okay? Maybe it was a little bit. Exactly. Salute to all the pastors out there and salute to all the healers out there, people that preach in their own way. God says, come as you are. That's what they say about the church, come as you are. So I take the pastors how they are, too. 
Ask Ye, 800-585-1051. We got rumors on the way? Yes, and let's talk about Jeezy. He talked about some fist fights him and uh, Jay-Z got into together. All right, we'll get into it next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. It's about time. What's going on? Rumor Report. Rumor Report. This is The Rumor Report. Talk to him. With Angela Yee on The Breakfast Club. Well, in a clip for Jeezy's uncensored <sighs> TV One show, uh, his episode, he talks about Jay-Z and how he has a lot of respect for Jay-Z because the two of them have actually been in some fist fights together. Me and Hold have been in some, like, you know, a lot of people don't know, like, we've been in some fist fights and everything, you know what I'm saying? Like, like some things popped off in Vegas, God bless the dead, Shakir Stewart, my brother. And I got to say, Hold got hands, because me and him was getting down, we was back to back, you know what I mean? And I heard his assistant say, Jay, get in the car. He's like, I ain't leaving Jeezy. I was like, yo, I rock with him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I know things happen, but who would let uh, Jay Z fight? You <laughs> got probably, to protect the money. Uh, they probably was all fighting. But I'm saying that like, you got to protect you know how the crazy money. That would be if he left Jeezy there fighting and ran and got the yeah, car. That would be crazy. <laughs> Not at that time. Hi, right, Jeezy. Nah, that would be foul, bro. Uh, Yo, let after me know you good. Text me. <laughs> no, did Jay Z could tell them ninjas to go get um. But where go was help security? Jeezy. That's my. I'm talking about them ninjas. Guys like Hov got ninjas. Uh, and they might have been this a better time when Hov didn't have the ninjas. And he where was just... Tata with the pepper spray? <laughs> That's the question. Jeez. All right, now, Jeezy also said people don't want you to change. A lot of people didn't see my vision, but they didn't know this is how I wanted to sit here. I mean, how many dicky suits can I own? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? One time I had a thousand pair of Chuck Taylors. Air Force One should have gave me some stock in there, you know what I'm saying? But at the same time, it's like people don't want you to change. And it's just like, my vision is my vision. You know what I'm saying? How I see myself is how I see myself. How you see yourself, that's how you see yourself. And what you want to be, those are your goals and your dreams. So you can't knock mine because you want me to stay in a certain place so that you're comfortable with who you are. Dropping the clues bonds with Pastor Young. I just posted that too, man. I literally just posted that clip, you know, the thing. And also, we got to thank God that, you know, our evolution and growth isn't based on the opinions of others. So salute Pastor Young. Jeezy, that is. All right. And they did find and arrest the person. He's been charged with second degree criminal mischief who vandalized George Floyd's statue in New York. He's an actor, right? Yes. Yeah, so he is a CSI New York actor. And his name is Micah Bills, 37 years old. He was apprehended for the crime. And he also, by the way, was um, was apprehended for the January... He was arrested for violating curfew during the January 6th riots at the U.S. Capitol. So he did target that. So he was an insurrectionist? Statue. He did vandalize it. And he was caught on camera. Mm. And he was apprehended. But he's known for appearing on CSI New York. Was He, he was an insurrectionist? He was at the Capitol? Like... Yeah, he violated um, curfew, so mm. he was there. Here's the thing, right? Should I feel like now y'all know his name, you know who he is. Is there forgiveness for this, or does he not get any work anymore? Because <sighs> I don't know if I would feel comfortable ever being on set with somebody that just randomly vandalizes statues and shows up at the Capitol riots. I mean, clearly, clearly you know he's a racist. Yeah. So, you know... No. I don't know. Now, no, George Floyd's brother, work. Terrence Floyd, had said that he wanted to meet and have an honest conversation with whoever defaced the statue to prevent future acts of vandalism. Mm. Like, I'm sure that will affect his future employment. <laughs> yes, that's will. the question you're asking, yes. Yeah, as it should. All right, Alicia Keys has announced details of her new double album, Keys. So it was actually a, a voice. She posted Keys, the album, two sides, two versions, original and unlocked, coming soon. My new album, the best Keys. We'll have to types of songs. Original versions. Laid back piano vibes. And unlocked versions. Upbeat, drums, level up vibes. A double album. Originals. Produced by Alicia Keys. Unlocked. Produced by Alicia Keys and Michael Made It. It says side B will uh, entirely be produced by Mike Well Made It. Ooh, I'm interested. Ooh. I'm intrigued. Drop on the clues bombs from Mike Well Made It. <laughs> I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued. I thought that's what she said. I couldn't tell. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, Xbox is reportedly developing a Wu-Tang uh, game. That should be Wu -Tang? Yeah, Wu-Tang video game. What's that? A Wu-Tang Clan and Ting collaboration? What'd you say? I said Xbox is developing a Wu Tang video game. Oh, she said Wu Tang. She said Tang. You did say Tang. You said Wu Tang. I thought it was like a Wu. I could. I thought it was like damn Wu Tang and um, Tang must be collaborating. Now the game is codenamed Shaolin, and it's reportedly in development. So it should be interesting to see what's going to be in there. They said it's um, 
It will feature seasonal content and be an estimated couple dozen hours long. For what game system? They say Xbox. Ooh, I'm intrigued. <laughs> yeah, what you, what you, ooh, I'm sport. intrigued. All right, all right. I got a couple of Xboxes that I never played. By the way, ooh. All right, Little Nas X's dad is not ups- uh, happy with Boosie and slammed him over his latest homophobic rant. He posted, "How the hell you're a gangster rapper promoting drugs, gun violence, degrading women, and getting high every video talking about you're for the kids? Man, sit your old man looking ass down. The game has passed you. We real bankhead over here, not like the guy who claims it." And then he posted champions. Now, Boosie responded, don't get mad at me because your son came out like that. LOL, I know it hurts. And so that was the two of theirs back and forth. Yeah, I mean, the man, if the man got a daddy, his daddy going to come to his defense, just like Boosie would come to the defense of his kids. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. All right, well, that is your rumor reports. All right, shout out to Revolt. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Everybody Ooh. else, the People's Choice mixes up next. Let's go. <laughs> The Breakfast Club. Your mornings will never be the same. Now, everybody's talking about TikTok right now, even sports fans. Now, Charlamagne, you seen this? Why are you talking to me about football and trying to show me TikTok, sir? Because your team is on there. Their fans are on there. The players are on there. This is where the real talk is happening. There's like literally everything you could think of right now on TikTok. You just got to see it. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Now, shout to Snoop for joining us this morning. Man, everybody go to Snoop's Instagram page and send Snoop some love, some light, and some healing energy, man. You know what I mean? I, I, I don't know how that brother's doing it this week, but I'm pretty sure if my mom you know, had passed this past weekend, I wouldn't be up and about doing my thing. But, mm-hmm. you know, everybody responds to you know their traumas differently. Everybody grieves differently. So salute to that. To the, to the icon living Snoop Dogg. And condolences to his family. Absolutely. All right, when we come back, we got the positive notice, the Breakfast Club. Go- Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. There's like four days left to my car show in Detroit. I can't wait to see you guys. If you haven't got your tickets, get your tickets now. And also, uh, Eddie, our producer, wants me to tell you guys, get ready for Powerhouse NYC. That's November 21st. They're saying Monday we have a, another major announcement, all right, on top of the Ooh, Migos. What is it? I don't Money even Bag know Young, what's Pomo going G, on. Sweetie, Spin King, and Friends, and more, all right? Charlamagne, go, ooh. I don't know if it's an ooh situation yet. Mm. So I'll wait and hear the announcement on Tuesday like everybody else. I said Monday. I didn't say Tuesday. Oh, Monday. And then if it's an ooh situation, mm. then you'll get an ooh out of me. Okay. All right. How, how often do you do ooh? When something intrigues me. I hope Young I may trademark that. When something intrigues me, that's when I do that. Mm. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, give us a, a positive note. Ooh. Positive note is simply this, man. Uh, well, first of all, I want to tell everybody, uh, make sure you scream the God's honest truth, you know, on Paramount Plus. All five episodes are available, and we'll we'll be back with a new episode uh, this Friday. Can't wait to announce who we got on. Um this week, but this Friday at 10 p.m. on Comedy Central, The God's Honest Truth. That's my late night talk show that you can stream on Paramount Plus right now as well. And the positive note is simply this. Man, I love this so much because, you know, I be liking to send people healing energy, even if they uh, wish me the opposite. But you're hoping I fall down. I am praying you get on your feet. That's why we are not the same. Breakfast Club, bitches! Are y'all finished or y'all done? <laughs> 